What systems do we have in place to alert people to whether there is a threat of a tsunami or not? When it's the actual earthquake itself that happens here, the earthquake is our warning. I'm sorry to say this, guys, but there we have if the really big one happens, when the really big one happens, we will have 10 to 15 minutes if we're on the coast to get off the coast. That is your warning. We, the police, the first responders, are not going to be going to the coast to get you off the coast. They don't have the time to do that because everybody's going to be moving in. But when there's an earthquake that is uh, in Alaska, in Japan, someplace like that, that's going to create a tsunami here, there's a lot of systems in place from reverse 911 in many of the areas to tsunami, tsunami um, warning signals, which work when you're near the tsunami siren. And then we also have access to some civil air patrol um, planes that actually have some really loud loudspeakers that they'll be moving up and down the coast. So when it happens from far away, we'll have several hours and there will be warnings of many different types. But when it happens under us, um, and we are on the same kind of subduction zone called the Cascadia subduction zone, it's quite like, it's almost a mirror image, of the one under um, the Indonesian area where they had that tsunami and earthquake in Banda Aceh. And it has happened here, the last recorded time it happened here was around 1700 that I know of. Um, that big a one. Um, and the person, we have wonderful, if it says something different in Shaky Ground, let me know because I haven't read all of Shaky Ground yet. Um, but we have a wonderful earthquake um, uh, expert, earthquake and tsunami expert here at HSU, Lori Dangler, and she's been doing a lot of research on this and it's been really helping us get prepared. Yes, Brenda. I think that um, in either living on shaky ground or the other hand up that comes when you attend the class, living on the fault line, it has a map with tsunami um, areas in it, and although some people might be tempted to get into their vehicle and drive to get farther away, in a short period of time, actually, if you look at the maps, it's not a lot, um, it's not a far distance to walk to get out of the tsunami zone, where being on foot, a normal person, like most, you know, normal walkers, can make distance in no time to be in, in a safe zone, you know, rather than clogging up the roads, to start walking to high ground I mean, it would be way quicker, right. okay, and create less problems for others. Boy, for a new volunteer, you know a lot, Brenda. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, so that earthquake again, so everybody get it. The earthquake is the warning, you know, and if it's strong enough to knock you off your feet, get, get away from the beach. Definitely get away from the beach. So one of the things I want to, you know, before I go on, I want to encourage you to do is to talk to the children. If any of you have children, because some of them, I know, are still a little bit skittish about this. And they need conversation. They need to be able to talk about their fears, and they need to be able to then be given some tools. Many of them know about drop, drop, cover, and hold, but definitely give them that tool, and definitely you know remind them that we're all okay. We're all okay. So, so the earthquake happened, and it was done. So, what did you do next? Most people tried to use their phone. Am I correct? How many of you didn't use your phone? Okay. <laughs> All right, well, that's, that's good. Um, there was phone gridlock. Phone gridlock. Um, and not only for the community, but for me. I couldn't get to my volunteers by cell phone, by regular phone, and I even have a card that supposedly gives me an ID that I can, I can get through, and it didn't work either because we were all talking on it. So um, one of the things that I recommend people do, and Red Cross recommends people to do, is have someone out of state that you can call. If you've got um, people in Humboldt County that you are worried about, and that happens, if you have an out of state number you can call, call Aunt Susie in Illinois and say, hey, this is Josie, I'm fine. I'm gonna call you back in a half an hour. Ho hopefully um, Jeff and Joe, your children, will call in and say they're okay too. Because you can get that line out, in the, especially in the first few hours after an earthquake, much more <coughs> easily than you can get the line in. Does that make sense? Yes. Texting. 
And texting, we found works. Yes, texting was a surprise. That was that was like a new piece to be added to our arsenal. Good point. Did, my lights came on right away or, uh, within two or three minutes, and I called New York and Imperial Valley, and lines were open then. There we go. But um, yeah, and they wouldn't have been worried here. And then because then 15, 20 minutes later, I couldn't get back to the right. same numbers. Right. And 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 so if you had other family in Humboldt County, give them that same phone number. So you know, so that's your that's your lifeline. Somebody else over here has something to say. Yes. A little more about the cell phone, uh, landline phone. Um, if I can, you call on a cell phone out of state. Would that work, or was it only texting? It depends on the cell towers um, whether they were up or not. I didn't try calling on my cell phone out of state. Did anybody? Yeah. And did it work? Yes. Okay. Okay. So um, the cell phones are becoming more and more and more reliable for us. And the other piece about landline phones, how many of you have cordless phones in your homes? Okay, well, all right. you're probably getting sick of putting your arms up. So one of the things that I have, I have a cordless phone, you know, most people do, but I also have one of those princess phones that plugs right into the jack. And when the, when the electricity goes out, I unplug my cordless and plug the princess phone in and if we can get phone service, that's going to work. So they cost seven or eight dollars, or you could buy them in a used store. I highly recommend having one of those. Highly recommend it. So yes, I uh, found that both Twitter and Facebook were just a flurry of activity with local people who were talking about what's going on and were helping each other and coordinating. Yeah. And um, you know, the local radio stations were also really on top of it too. Local radio stations were definitely, um, and, I, and I heard that about Twitter and Facebook. I was too busy trying to find my volunteers and figure out if we needed shelters. And, but um, the social media, which is actually doing a lot of good for the Haitian response, which we can talk about later, um, it's just brand new, and it is, it's amazingly powerful. Yes? I was just going to say that um, I live in Old Town Eureka, and our power was out for like all day. It must have been about six hours. Yes, all the time. Back on, so our internet was off, the phones were off. We were cut off. We were cut off. Basically. Right. Right. Old, Eureka got um, got hit hard, and as did Old Town Eureka. We were, I've got to tell you, incredibly lucky. The damage could have been so much more. And damage to people and displacing of people was, we just kept waiting for more people to have been displaced, and it didn't happen. Um, we did help about 20 people, but, uh, uh, you know, we were amazed at that. Um, so, what else? Oh, so the lights go out. Okay. But it happened at 4.30 and you don't have any power. So, one of the things that we need to all do, if you haven't got that already, and probably most people here do, know where your flashlights are. All right? Make sure you know where your flashlights are. And actually, I have flashlights in pretty much every room in my house. Um, I have a lot of candles, but flashlights, you know, in every room in the house. And what you don't want to do is have something like this happen at night when you're in bed and you're safe, and then you it, it and can black be black when there's no light. I mean, the world is is you know, and then there's, when there's cloud cover, it makes it even worse. And so you need to be able to know what that flashlight is and grab it, and then help the rest of your family, of course. So knowing where the flashlight was was really important. Important having some way of communicating with your loved ones. Drop covering and holding extremely important. What what other pieces? You know, don't let me do all this talking. What what other pieces of information or what other kinds of preparedness? Um, and we'll get to a disaster pack later. Should we all be thinking about?